So, this is the final type of redox titration that we need to learn about. And this is an iodine thiosulfate titration. So, doing this titration will allow me to say, will allow me to work out the concentration of iodine. So, it allows me to work out concentration of I2. Do you have to know Yeah, you need to know this one. How does it work? Well, generally, although obviously it may vary, your thiosulfate, normally it's sodium thiosulfate, which is Na2S2O3, aqueous, is put that, and you know that concentration. So you know the concentration of that. That goes in your burette, and that is colourless. Um, on Wednesday, I'll show you this. In your conical flask, normally you've got your 25.0 centimetres cubed of I2 aqueous and you don't know the concentration of that. That is what you're going to try and work out. Iodine in water is kind of like a yellowy colour. A bit, a bit yellow. So, what happens is as you add this, oh, what colour would this be? Iodine. Orangey, dark brown. Iodine, <laughs> <Okay>. ions. <laughs> Colourless. <laughs> Remember, the, the halogens are coloured. So the halogens are the ones that are coloured. So iodine in um, cyclohexane would be purple. Iodide, chloride, bromide, they're always colourless. Think of like sodium chloride, salt, colourless kind of thing. This is also colourless. So what's going to happen is that this just goes from yellow to kind of like lighter yellow to lighter yellow to colourless, which is a bit of a nap endpoint. What do you want in an endpoint? You want like a sudden, sudden change. So biologists, what chemical detects iodine? Starch, yes, brilliant. So what you do is you start the titration off, this gets yellow and then it ends up being like a pale yellow colour. When it's really pale yellow, near the end point, so near... Wait, so it starts off yellow? It starts off yellow with the okay. iodine, yeah. As the iodine becomes iodine, it gets paler and paler and paler. When you're near the end point, so when it's very pale yellow, so near the end point, so when it is pale yellow, you add starch. <coughs> what does starch do when it needs iodine? Blue yeah, blue back. So it goes like a blue black colour. And the end point is now it goes from blue black to colourless. So the end point is going from blue, black to colourless. It will go colourless? At the end point, because all the iodine would have been removed, so the starch isn't detecting any okay. iodine anymore. So you add the starch, it yeah. will go blue, black, yeah. and then do you add more? Then you carry on, Until top, it top, goes, top, okay. and then it goes colourless. Uh, yeah. Really good point. Yeah, if you fine. if you add it too early, because there's so much iodine there, the starch just ends up. It just goes horrible and sinks to the bottom. You get like a uh -huh. um, a solid up here, and it just sinks to the bottom. So you've got to wait to the end. So it just gets paler and paler. Otherwise, it just it just won't work. And you you it's really difficult. Even a, even when you've removed it, you still get like a black tinge to it. It's quite difficult to tell. So near the end point when it's like a pale yellow, you still see a, a massive, you know, uh, change with this blue black, and then you just a few more drops, and it'll go, you know. Um, if you add it at the beginning, it won't work. So you've got to, you've got to add it in here. Uh, so what's the point of this? You may think, well, okay, you know, sometimes you want to detect um, IV, but not always. Well, you can use this to detect lots and lots of different oxidising agents and we're going to um, 
look at why now. So we can use this, we can use this um, titration to uh, work out the concentration of lots of different oxidizing agents. How does that work? Well, okay, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. If you've got some oxidizing agent, we add to the oxidizing agent iodide ions, lots of them. <coughs> iodide ions end up being oxidized to iodine. Wait, what do oxidizing agents do again? They donate. They oxidize. So this, they oxidize my iodide to iodine. Okay. So my ox, there it's minus one, and there it's zero. Okay. So I died has been oxidized to iodine. So what I do, and it will become when we do examples, you'll kind of see what this is going, what's going on about. You add to your oxidizing agent an excess of iodide ions. They convert all my iodide ions to iodine. Once I've converted them all to iodine, I then do this titration. So when we do some examples you'll see but I, I convert, I can use the equation of my oxidization to work out how much iodide, sorry, yeah. iodide will react to produce iodine, and then I do this titration here, and I can back calculate my concentration. Okay, um, I think I've explained that really badly, so shall we do an example? Yeah. yeah. Do we write that out? Yeah. Uh, I want to do, so the, the key thing is, is you, if I just run through, is you add iodide ions to the oxidizing agent. Um, the oxidizing agent converts I minus to I two. Then do the titration <coughs> to work out the concentration of I two. This can be used. work out 